Hey, we've got some pretty nifty educators here, award winners, something to be proud of in Rhode Island. Welcome into my state of mind. I am Dan York. You know, on our Friday programs, if you're a regular viewer, and thank you for watching, and for those of you who are just glomming on to this uh, chubby guy on television, we appreciate uh, you doing so. Uh, the audience is growing by leaps and bounds, and has started to figure out that on Fridays, I don't uh, opine as much as I usually do, because uh, we like to take a little bit more of a long-form discussion to the table and for the weekend. So at 7.30, 11.30, I'm IRI TV and Fox Providence at midnight. Now, Sunday nights at 9 o'clock, I'm IRI TV. You know, if the, football, if, if, if the, if the game stinks, you just get over to my IRI TV. You can catch a longer-form conversation on things that are compelling. And tonight, I am really excited about, about this. We have two award-winning educators, the Principal of the Year and the Teacher of the Year back to back and together. So let's get to it. I don't know if you caught this headline. I hope you did. This is uh, the announcement that uh, the principal at Cumberland High School had been named the National Association of Secondary School Principals Principal of the Year. And here was a moment at a ceremony. Uh, on a daily basis, when I see you help out a kid in the hallway that needs it, or a kid that's uh, sitting alone in the cafeteria and you bring them over, uh, or um, uh, anytime I've seen you out in the community going out and making a difference in the lives of other people or being sportsmanlike out on that athletic field and being positive, uh, those are the things that uh, bring me back to this job and there's really nothing else I'd rather do than, than be a high school principal. Little did I know when uh, you bumped into me at a football game a couple years ago and introduced yourself and said hello that I would be meeting the National Principal of the Year and then have him on the program. And he teaches not very far from my front driveway, actually, in Cumberland. Congratulations, Alan. It's Thank phenomenal you. stuff. Thank you. Blow you away? It, it did. Um, I, it was really a once in a moment, a once in a lifetime moment for my, my family and, and me. And uh, to walk into that auditorium and uh, have the class of 2016 cheer like they did to share that with the dedicated faculty that I have. I, it was it's just an amazing experience. Did they hide it from you? Did you not know? How do they pull these things off? So, well, there's a, there's a process in the state where they identify state principal of the year, and those 50 go to Washington, D.C., and uh, out of those applications, they choose three finalists. And when I was there, um, there was a process where I had to give a 10-minute interview and uh, uh, then a 35-minute uh, uh, presentation after that. And they told the three semifinalists that they'd surprise us at our school in October. Mm. And uh, I was pretty surprised. I, I, I obviously, on the walk to this room, I uh, sort of uh -oh. started to have an idea why am I headed in this direction. Right, right. Uh, so you applied for the, uh, for, the, for the award? You get nominated by, okay. and I, don't, I still don't know who nominated me, to be honest with you, uh, in the state. And then there's a, a process where the Rhode Island Association of School Principals uh, sends out uh, visiting teams after reviewing applications. You know what? I, listen, I, I, I know you've done some things. And I want to talk about a couple of things that you've done. But what I really like about what I've read you've done is you've got the hats off the kids. <laughs> Pet peeve of mine. It's not a learning environment with a baseball hat on. I, nice job, I'd agree. man. I'd agree. Yeah. Was that what I'm? You know, sometimes the simplest things might be the toughest. How how, how is the pushback on that? You know, coming into the school, we had uh, staff that had already organized a a group to deal with what I call those first order changes, those easy things like hats and uh, certain school culture issues like that. And uh, so coming in, they they had a leader that was going to support that and. I really felt that that was easy stuff, uh, raising expectations around those things. Uh, as we move to the more difficult things around uh, whether it's uh, uh, higher expectations around academics and our, our standard-based grading system and uh, pushing kids to uh, challenge themselves with more uh, rigorous uh, college-level courses, uh, those are the harder things. And um, But we had a lot of wins there in changing our school culture, making it safe, making it uh, a positive place to be, and very honestly, Kids want that structure. Kids want a place that uh, is, is safe to go to where, where they are held to some expectations and there are uh, rules and structure. That it's, it's a good thing. And kids. Another thing you did is aesthetic. It's not really curriculum, but I think this was key too. You upset the apple cart by moving graduation from the high school football field to the PPAC. Let yes. me tell you, I'm in the neighborhoods. 
uh, and, and my kid was, you know, she was in high school at the time with her friends. So we're, he's moving it from the, you know, and but it was getting a little bit like uh, Party Central outside. You move it indoor and brought a little decorum. Gutsy call, again, against the grain. Not everybody was happy. True. It, uh, it was uh, also one of the more controversial uh, calls, but uh, I had watched videotape, and that's all I'll say of the uh, ceremonies from the past. And uh, yeah, the, I floaty, think, the floaty gal and all uh, that kind of stuff. All yeah, all sorts all of things. Whole thing. and, and uh, our kids yeah. and, our, and our families just, I think, deserve a more formal, professional ceremony where it is really all about uh, the students actually being able to hear the speakers, okay. uh, actually uh, being able to take a, a quality photo. So, Key thing that you think you've done educationally, curriculum-wise, that's advanced the costs? I think two things. Uh, uh, one is uh, we, we really tried to um, uh, focus on uh, creating career pathways in the high school, uh, especially around STEM and so uh, STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, math, and so uh, we create a pre-engineering pathway, robotics. Uh, we, we've uh, brought in uh, uh, a curriculum called Project Lead the Way to create a biomedical science pathway, and these are. These are pathways that are um, very engaging. I think they uh, certainly relate to certain economic goals that the state has, and uh, we're certainly trying to transform all our curriculum to be engaging and performance-based. But uh, these are uh, this is one pathway that really has, has made a difference. And I think the other uh, thing is uh, we've challenged kids to take higher-level courses, and, and we've said to them that there's nothing that really stands in your way from uh, performing. And uh, there's very few kids that have a, an ability issue. If you work hard enough, you challenge yourself, uh, you can improve your capacity to perform. And so we have a policy of open enrollment where students are uh, allowed to take a course that they feel uh, th uh, that they'll live up to the challenge of that course. And so our, uh, our AP enrollments are alone have gone from uh, 106 kids taking AP classes to like 531. Graduating from Cumberland High School now in a collegiate uh perspective is probably a, a much cooler thing, right? Admi yeah. I, I, we see admissions changes? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, our, our, our students get into some of the best colleges in, in the country. Um, they don't always go to them. There's a lot of factors like uh, finances and everything sure. else that go into that or staying home so you can do your laundry at but home. But it's no longer a subpar curriculum. Oh, absolutely, absolutely not. I, I mean, uh, uh, the, the it's, it's a curriculum of high expectations. Uh, we have uh, high supports that go along with that too, uh, but uh, students can't just uh, complete a task anymore. They need to really show us that they learn, uh, learn this material. And our emphasis on a standards-based approach uh, has really enabled that to happen. All right, hold on to your thoughts. We're going to meet the teacher of the year, and then I'm going to bring them both back at the end of the show to talk about the whole picture. And we'll solve all education in like 20 minutes. Stay with us. So you met the National Principal of the Year, and he'll be back for uh, kind of a group conversation here. But here's the next headline, which is, I thought this was great. It was, it was a good week or so here in terms of uh, award-winning accomplishments for, for teachers. And uh, Kendra Borden was surprised. And I got a check for this one for, with the Milken Education Award. And here she was at her ceremony. This is all I've ever wanted to do. I have dreamt about it since I was a little kid, and I played teacher at home with my friends. I was always the one being the teacher and I made them be my students and now I'm lucky enough to have these students. Congratulations. Thank you very much. They surprised you. Oh yes, they surprised me. Uh, we knew there was going to be a ceremony that day. We knew that there were going to be news cameras, but we have a lot of new initiatives going right. on in Pawtucket. Right. And I was told that they were going to choose Pawtucket, I'm sorry, our school to spotlight. Ah. So I was unaware that so it was So they had a me. fib to you yeah, just oh, to yeah. get you in there and surprise you. They completely surprised All me. All right, so so um, Alan, the, the pr principal of the year, I think got a check for 250 Like You got 25 grand. I did. What up? Ah, <laughs> it's very exciting. Exciting. Yeah, my students think I'm ready to retire. Yes. They've never seen so much money, so they think that. Well, you know what? That's a good point because too many kids in, in school today aren't taught about the value of money and how far it goes and 
what they're going to do for a living and how they're right. going to pay the bills and all that kind of stuff. But it is a big chunk of change for anybody. It so, is. So it's definitely good for you. life changing. And I, I got to be careful. You, you weren't the Rhode Island teacher of the year. You're the milk and educator. I'm the milk and educator. Uh, educator. Which is a, a it's national. It's nationwide. Yeah. Yeah. They choose 40 educators across the country every year. So I'm the only one in Rhode Island. Why do you think exciting. you won? You know, I've been asking myself that question for quite a while. Right, well, stop and, being humble. I, I can already tell that you're going to be humble. Don't be humble. What are you doing? What are you doing with the kids? I'm building a rapport with the kids. I think that anybody can be a good, strong teacher in a classroom if they have a passion to teach. Obviously, you have to be knowledgeable about your content. That's so important. But if you respect the students and they respect you and you're familiar with education, I mean, I do all the things I think a good educator does. I am very familiar with assessment literacy, so I'm capable of assessing students to understand what skills they have and what skills they're lacking so I can bridge those gaps in education for them. Yeah, do they come in lacking pretty much in your they English do. class? I'm, I mean, they're seventh grade students. Right. So just getting them to put the effort in sometimes is quite the challenge. And when I do get them to you know try their best, it's very easy to see where their strengths lie and where their weaknesses lie. And it's a challenge sometimes to get them to be able to rise to their full potential. Um, you teach English. I do. We ain't doing too good in English yeah. these days. I mean, in general, well, as a society, we're not paying attention to the details. We're not speaking properly. We're not writing properly. We're not spelling properly. At least that's how it feels. I'm not just picking on kids. I'm talking about everybody. Oh, I agree. So can we turn this baby around? I hope so. I'm working on it. Yeah. I think grammar has fallen to the wayside with technology and text talk. Right. Uh, it's an ongoing battle. And I think you're right. It's not just kids anymore. It's adults. Do you diagram sentences? We, I Like do, we did in the old days? I do, but it's not in the curriculum right now. To Why? diagram sentences. Go back to the basics. Uh, you understood a subject. We go to the center. prepositions. Line. Yes. Well, it gave you structure. It made you under... I, I'm you're gonna, right. I, I shouldn't. <laughs> it's, you know, it's your day. It's not my day. Um, seventh graders. Middle school kids. Yeah. What a pivotal time. Yes? Yes. They're 13 yeah. going on 30 on Tuesday. The 13 going on 3 on Wednesday, correct? I think you just nailed it. Yeah. Yes. Well, you've been a parent at one. You kind of got it figured out. Oh. It's hard, isn't it? It is hard. It's a social game in middle school. I think that they're very excited about who they're going to hang out with after class mm. and who's dating whom. And it's it's interesting to get them to sit down and focus. That's why you have to be so engaging in the classroom and bring up current topics with them and get them motivated because there's so much, just teaching the manners in the classroom, you know? Because like you said, some days they're 13 going on three. You have to reteach certain things and sometimes they're 13 going on 30 and they're teaching me things, which mm. is incredible. It's nice to see the different perspectives that they have to offer. All right, so there's a lot of kids today conversation that goes on in my radio program. And I never thought I'd be old enough to be like, oh, kids today. Are they that different? Are they that different? Or are we just I think we're just getting older. Uh, we're, just getting, we're just getting grouchy? Yeah, I think we might be getting grouchy. I catch myself doing it sometimes. But there is a, a generation gap. I mean, again, it's the technology thing. We don't ask kids to go outside and play and use their imaginations anymore. So they're so absorbed with technology that it's difficult nowadays to get them to stop, pull away, hmm. and think critically. I want to talk more about that with you and the principal when I bring them back. Tell me what you think the number one thing you've brought to the table is, not, uh, that you've brought to the table educationally that not only puts you in position to win this award, but gives you a reward going home every day saying, I'm making a difference. What are you doing? I'm making it difficult for them. I am increasing the rigor every day in my classroom to push them to levels that they did not think they could reach. I give them things that they tell me they can't do, and I make them do it. That's the most important thing in education. They complain when I give them these tasks, but if someone doesn't push them to expand their mind, expand their thoughts, try their best, they're never going to succeed. I'm trying to break them out of their comfort zone, and I make them read all the time. And they hate it, but they love me for it. But really, I think anything any good teacher would do, I don't think I'm any more special than anybody in my building. Well, it seems to me that we've got a common theme here of high expectations. I'll bring Alan back. We'll have a group conversation. Stay with us. 
Welcome back in. We've got the Milken Educator Award winner from Pawtucket Slater Junior High School, Kendra Borden, and we've got the National Principal of the Year in Alan Tremero from Cumberland High School. And, you know, I'm hoping that I can develop a relationship with them here on TV and on radio where they can be people to go to on education issues because clearly they've got things to offer past the auspice of the school buildings that. Um, they are in and if you just joined us make sure you catch the program on foxprovidence.com where you can always go back online um, and, and, and see see the show because these are important conversations and if you've missed any of it both of these award-winning educators have indicated that the bar has got to be higher correct yes. the bar has got to be higher let me ask you about about kids today in one sense here's my theory dig in and don't be shy <laughs> I think they are horizontally better thinkers than I was when I was younger, but they're not vertical thinkers. In other words, they've got a lot of stimulation, they've got a lot of platforms, they've got a lot of technology, got a lot of things coming at them, but they don't dig very deep and can't stay too focused for too very long or care to. Yes, no, you're shaking your head, dig oh, in. I, I think I agree. But I think we're changing that. That's what we're doing. That's what good educators are doing is changing that. They have the answers right at their fingertips right now with the internet and technology. So it's our job to get them to think critically, read deeper, look at higher level text, start using their brain and thinking on that vertical, yeah, I'm vertical for, slope. For us at high schools, it's about focus on college and career ready standards. And um, I think that uh, there's a lot of politicizing that's going on with things like the Common Core right now, but w we're really working at a very thoughtful implementation of those standards because I think those are deeper, more focused standards that are, are getting kids to be more critical thinkers. Um, but technology, they, are, they, they certainly are uh, a generation that need their hands on the wheel of this information journey that they're on, and we're, we're well, the hands are the, on the wheel all the time. Mm, you know, mm. I got my own, my iPad, my phone. But getting that, getting the toys out of their mm. hands is almost like cutting their limbs off, isn't it? Well, yeah, I have my, yeah. I, I have my own children, and I get it. But the focus isn't so much on just this piece of technology in front. Of them. The focus is on great teachers like this and the instructional practice emphasis, because it's still about teaching practice and then leveraging this tool in the best way possible to get them to do things that they haven't been able to do in the past, like mm -hmm. connect with people that uh, you couldn't connect with in a normal classroom or collaborate or, uh, or uh, just transform a learning experience in some way for them. And so that's really the focus is still on those 21st century skills. And I think more than ever, it's really on those skills now. So you're teaching in the junior high school level. He's principaling on, this, on the senior high school level. You have a responsibility to deliver to guys like him Absolutely. the right kind of student. How are you? Are, are they getting it done? Are you, the, you, this has got to be deeper than just starting at ninth grade. What's the challenge there? I mean, the challenge is going to be the same for any grade, I think. And like Alan said, it's getting them college and career ready at any age level. The standards are very clear. The What uh, standards? The Common Core standards. Everything these students need to learn. Are you and bullish on Common Core? Yes or no? I know it's very deep conversation. Are you you're supportive of the Common Core? I am. You yes, are. You're very both much supportive so. of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yes. Um, the skills are clear. The students are uh, very aware of what they need to accomplish in order to be ready to get to high school. And, you know, you've got to tell them all the time, you need these skills in order to be college and career ready. And these are the skills that are going to, they're going to use every day in life, you know, all the time. We work at eight, eight grade eight to grade nine transitions, but the, the, the thing that we really need to work on is really a K through 16 conversation or even pre-K through a 16 conversation and, and working to fill gaps throughout that and getting colleges on the same page. I traveled to Ohio not too long ago last year. That whole state had this one vision where all uh, students were at least, 60% of students, excuse me, were gonna at least achieve a, an associate's degree before, before leaving high school. That's a, that's a one vision and there's been a lot of work that's been put into that. So uh, I think we can do that with the scale that Rhode Island has too. Uh, we can really think on that type of continuum and ensure that uh, we're meeting kids where they are and getting them to uh, meet standards that are going to help them tackle the challenges that they're going to face. It makes sense. i got to tell you, as a parent of now a junior in college, I I've learned a couple of things. Every grade matters. Some of us think, eh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eh. Every grade matters. I, I don't want to talk out of school and embarrass my own child, uh, my young adult, in, 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 on television, but I've talked about it on the radio before. 
the screw-ups in math in third, fourth, and fifth grade with the investigations math back in her day killed her mm. in high school. Killed her. Mm. And today in, this, in, in, in college, thank God she's not majoring in that kind of category, but needs it still. Killed her. And it really showed me that what you're doing with seventh graders and what some other great teachers doing with second graders is as important as the teacher that's got a junior in high school. Yes? Of no? Absolutely. That continuum K six the K. I mean, everything thing. they learn in every grade is going to be applicable at some point. Yeah, later but it's in hard to catch up. In other words, you're getting oh, yeah. you're you're reworking some kids that didn't do well earlier. You're you're reworking reworking. Mm -hmm. it, you know, th that elementary stuff is really crucial. Well, and that's the the what the Common Core state standards aim to achieve is to teach them on grade level expectations, but to also bridge those gaps hmm. where they're lacking some of those skills to get them on grade level so they're prepared for the next grade. What's the best thing educators in Rhode Island are doing right now? What's the best thing? Well, I don't think you can, you can improve student performance without having uh, students that are engaged. And so there's a lot of work uh, from the ground level classroom and teacher work to uh, ensure that we're working at personalizing learning. Uh, through tools like blended learning and, and using technology, but there's been a lot of work put into that. I think there's a lot of work also put into, um, again, college and career standards and pathways, including even something like the Governor's Initiative that's allowing us to, to, to have uh, all students uh, take a college level class for, for free this year. And I think that's a really valuable thing. What's the best thing going on? Oh, I I mean, I think Alan did a nice job engaging kids is a, is a great thing. All right, thing. good. What's the worst thing that's going on? Um, What's the big problem? What's the, what, what do we got to fix? Is that two more shows, or is it, can you do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I, I think the biggest Come problem on. is I think teachers need more support. I do. You're, by you're what? blown away by, by that. What do you mean? I'm not blown by away society, by society. I feel as though there's a lot of negativity looked at in our profession, I think that It's because of the unions. We do it's not because of your great work. It's because of the unions that have made your profession disrespected. That's a whole other show. And we want, you know, we just want the best for the you kids. You feel like you need more support. And maybe, I don't know. I get it. What's the worst thing that's Tough going question. on in education I, right I now? I think the uh, so overemphasis on, on uh, testing or, or uh, at times using certain things to uh, uh, be real punitive with teachers is the only factor. That, that's really uh, uh, put the wrong focus on what the Common Core is actually all about. Um, mm. And so I think that, that's had a real, a real impact. Um, and I, 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 for, from the principal point of view, uh, one uh, issue with the principalship is that uh, it takes five to seven years to really make sustainable change in a, in a school. Sure. And, and very often, most uh, principals nationwide are not there to see their freshman class that they came in with graduate. And so uh, we're, we're pushing for, uh, from a national perspective, to invest more in principal preparation and ongoing development uh, because I think an investment in leadership is really an investment in learning. Of course, you need great these teachers Absolutely. to we be are, great principals. From the school effect, the teacher is number one and that the, the, the principal's leadership is second behind that. And yeah. so uh, team together can really do amazing things. Congratulations. Absolutely. Come back and talk shop later, will you? Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much for <laughs> having us. Good thank stuff. Ah, good educators. I love it. Stay with us. Last word. <laughs> it's so refreshing to talk positively about education and to meet winners in education. If you've got one that I should meet, please, your state of mind is important to us. It's not just about grinding over union and public policy issues. It's about winning in the classrooms. and. Ah, it's refreshing to talk that way. So give me a ring and send me somebody else. You have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday on the radio at noon on WPRO. Good night.